Hey drummers, hope you're well. Shout out to Superstar Channel member Malcolm who asked about this. This is the drum beat, of course, from Train, uh, Drops of Jupiter. Brilliant feel, man. Absolutely love this. That swinging 16th note, laid back, beautiful playing on the original by uh, Scott Underwood. I think they've had a, a couple of different drummers, haven't they? But he's the main guy I'd associate with Train. He played on the original of this. And what a beautiful feel. Again, it's just lovely, laid back, like a massive sound out of that kit. But no, it's not pushing for the tone or anything like that. Beautiful, laid back. Everything's like perfectly uh, played. Lovely stuff. What I've presented here, and I'll do a full playthrough of this song shortly, actually, for Malcolm. But um, in just for now, here's a little starter to get you going. I've presented what I would see as a, like a typical like two-bar phrase that you see in the verse. It's one of those drum parts that isn't set in stone. The part changes ever so slightly, small variations as it goes along. But this is a typical two-bar phrase uh, from the verse. As I say, it goes like this. So that kind of deal. And the most important thing above anything else, like I say, is the 16th note swing. So the eighth notes here are straight and at its heart, it's a straight eights feel, isn't it? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... At a pretty slow, groovy speed, this is 79 beats per minute. But what brings it to life is the placement of the bass drums and the little ghosted notes in particular, and the skipped loud snare drum actually as well, which have a 16th note swing feel. So the 16th note undercurrent running through it, rather than being one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. It's got that beautiful swaggering, kind of sassy, loose, relaxed, yeah, 16th note swing. So let's have a little look. Um, again, this is just a typical two bar phrase. I'll go slow, I'll play everything, but I'll go slow. There's a lot of stuff in it. Let's go uh, slow and I'll play first of all just the bass drum and the loud snares. And I think if you just did this, it would get you a lot of the way there. I think the, the ghosted snare drums are quite important as well, but it would get you most of the way there. So let's play that a little bit. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and I'll just sit on this for a bit. So like I say, in this uh, version, I've left out the ghosted snare drums there. And the, even what the bass is playing there is only, a, is only typical. But I'd say that's the little two-bar loop that happens the most often in that verse. Now with the ghosted notes... So as usual, over on the channel members page, I'll um, put the notation and a practice along version so you can bring that right down. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put the version with just the kick and the loud snare, and I'll put, probably put a version which is hands only as well, so you can work on just the ghosted notes and the loud snare and the hi-hat, and then another version where it's the final version, everything together. And what you'll be able to do there is channel members is slow that one down, you know, groove along with it, build it up bit by bit like that, level by level. And that's a really nice way to do it, I think. And one final word about this groove is that on the original, it's funny that for all the world, it sounds like there's a ghosted snare drum just before beat four each time, uh, which when I tried to, when I just sort of worked it out and tried to play it, it's really, like it sounds good on the record, but it is really weird to play in real life, and I thought that's interesting. So I looked up a couple of live versions, uh, one where it's Scott Underwood playing and one where it's a different drummer. And in both cases, the drummer isn't playing that quiet snare drum just before the loud snare drum on beat four uh, each time. So it's hard to know exactly what's going on there. It does sound for all the world like it's in there. It might be a delay effect, might be a bit of studio trickery, 
but it might have been something that Scott Underwood played on the day that then he didn't play in subsequent live versions. I would personally leave that one out. So it would be, if it was in there, it would be. You hearing that? So one E and a D E and now. Now, so you get one and two and three and cha-cha. Uh, again, it sounds good on the record, but it, it isn't played in the live version. So my suspicion is a bit of studio trickery of some sort. Uh, if you want to learn it like that, cool. In my versions that I'll present, uh, I've written in the notation below and played here and put on the channel members page. I, that won't include that because in the live versions, like I say, no drummer is, is playing that. So sh um, shout out to Superstar channel mem member Malcolm and thanks to Scott Underwood for giving us such a brilliant drum part here. Again, I mean, the details are lovely to work on. More than anything else for me, it's just that feel, man. It's loose. It's be beautifully balanced. He's, I don't know what sort of room he was playing it in. It must have been a big, nice, live-sounding room because it sounds like he's really not hitting this, the thing too hard. He's not laying into it. He's not pushing for the tone, but he's getting this massive tone and actually noticing Scott Underwood play live. One of the things he's really doing is stroking the cymbals beautifully. He's doing that classic um, John Bonham-style thing to my eyes and ears, which is like hitting the drums, you know, in a way that produces great tone, but not, again, not whacking them, but really playing the cymbals tastefully, keeping it right down on the cymbals, just thus making his drums sound huge. You know, I actually noticed, um, just having a little read around on Wikipedia, that this band did a, um, a tribute album where they played the whole of Led Zeppelin II, I think it was, in its entirety and released it as a, as a record. So clearly they were fans of Led Zeppelin, so that's interesting. But he's definitely doing that thing of getting a big sound out of the drums and just stroking the cymbals. Beautiful to watch and what a great result in the sound. So shout out to Malcolm and uh, see you soon. Thanks a million. <laughs>